So you've decided you want to do some home chemistry and set up your own lab. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that you should get. My, this is my chemistry set, uh, my little lab going on here. This is pretty much everything you'd need. I have had no problems as of yet uh, with not having stuff. So I'm going to go through each item so you can know what they all do and stuff. Let's start with the safety things. Most important, get some gloves if you're dealing with acids or anything like that. They are very, very good to have. They're like five bucks for a hundred. Don't be cheap. Safety glasses. Probably a good idea for me to have actual ones, but I find these work just as well. Um, and for me, that's all for safety. So let's go to the other stuff. All right, so you should get some of these clips. They're little plastic clips. They're like $3 or something like that for 10 of them. And what they do is they go on to the glass joints like this in order to keep glass joints together. Very useful to have. Get some grease. Uh, this is automotive grease. It says it's white grease, so you can get like silicone grease or something like that. Um, they're used for greasing up the glass joints. If you don't grease them up before you put them together, they'll get stuck. And that's really bad because sometimes you cannot get them apart. So grease is very good to have. Something like this will last me. Goodness, let's see. I've had this set for a couple months and I've barely used any of the grease. So this will last you years at least. Okay. Um, Get some thermometers, get a couple of them. Don't just get one because they tend to break fairly easily. These go up to 200 and 300 degrees Celsius. I had four of them, but then one broke. So that's why I have three now. Good to have, should get some. Um, a milligram scale are good to have. This one is like a jewelry scale. It goes, it's plus or minus one milligram. So these are pretty good, you should get one of them. Not too expensive, I think that was like $25 or something like that, certainly reasonable. Um, you need some storage containers. I just sort of MacGyver it and use empty milk jugs or empty juice containers. They typically, they tend not to react with things, uh, but you should check and make sure that none of the things you're storing in them react with the plastic on the outside because that would lead to a mess. Also, if you're storing powders, you can use solo cups. <laughs> also a little bit improvised, but um, you can get 200 solo cups for like $15, so I find pretty, pretty good to have. Um, just take two of them, tape them together like that, and eh. They work not too badly okay let's see here um if you're going to be doing any kind of electrolysis you should have a power source for this i just use one of these normal wall warts but you can use a laptop battery charger or oh, anything pretty much that uh, outputs a dc voltage having a connector like this on the outside is totally fine uh you can use wire to connect the positive and negative i'll show you how to do that in another video and if you are doing electrolysis, you do need wire. This was like 20 bucks at Home Depot, probably more than I'll ever need. It's copper wire, it doesn't really matter what you use though. It's probably gonna react with what you're doing anyway, so you just tape it up really tight to keep it sealed. Um, like I said, get to that later. Okay, pH paper is really good. This pH paper, I think was, it's like, it's like $2 for a pack of 100 strips, which will last you a while. I have 10 of these and I got them for like five dollars total so ph paper is really cheap you'll use it a lot you should get it do that uh filter paper i actually do not have a proper filtration setup but i find that filter paper works pretty well for uh various things and you might want to get some regardless of if you think you're going to use it or not again about as cheap as a ph paper so yeah good stuff um acetone go to home depot or any kind of hardware store and you can get acetone. It is indispensable for cleaning the grease off of the glass joints and for cleaning stuff out of the inside of the round bottom flasks, which are these guys, which I'll get to in a minute. This was, I think, $9 and should last me a while. So get that, it's good to have. Okay, um, as far as the glassware, first, well, let's deal with this first. This is a stand for holding the glassware together if you've got something that's heavy or something like that. Uh, it's pretty much just a heavy metal base with a metal rod and a bunch of fancy looking attachments. Um, these are just sort of random ones. This guy right here is my favorite. Um, he's pretty good for holding things together no matter what shape or size they are. Um, yeah, so you should get one of those. It's good. You don't necessarily need one, but it makes life just much, much easier. 
Okay, um, magnetic stir. You don't need this, but you probably should get it. What it is, is it's got a magnet under this thing, and what you do is you set one of the little stir bars on top, and it spins around as the magnet spins, and stirs whatever kind of stuff you have in the flask. So what you do is you put this in the flask, and then the flask on top of the stirrer, and it stirs it, like, through the glass, because it's a magnet. Also get some various sizes of magnetic stir bars, if you do have a magnetic stir. I've got a few too many here, and some of them are a little too small to be <laughs> useful, but that's okay. It's good to have, I guess. Um, you also would like want to get a heating plate, a hot plate, like that looks just like this, except instead of just a stirrer, it's also a hot plate. Or, even better, get a heating mantle with a stirrer inside of it. This is super fancy. What it does is it heats the round bottom flask from this mesh right here and it heats it really really well it's very very insulated and effective in boiling stuff and what you do is it also has a magnetic stir so you can put one of the stir bars in the flask and it'll stir it and heat it at the same time it's pretty fancy this was about 200 bucks kind of expensive but in my opinion worth it don't skimp on that okay i'm gonna put this back here and move this guy out of the way as well okay so let's get two round bottom flasks. Really useful things. You kind of have to get them. Um, they're for reacting stuff and putting them in your own, in your heating mantle to heat up. Um, you can have the option of one neck, two necks like that guy over there, or three necks, which I don't have. Honestly, if you're gonna do anything, I would get a three necked thing because it is no problem to take one of these little stopper things and stop off any of the holes that you aren't using. So I would just go with a three neck and stop off any things that you aren't using. It's better to have more than less. So this is a thousand milliliters right here. I find it's pretty good for most applications. I have one two thousand milliliter one that's with two necks, which is also pretty useful. Um, you can get bigger or smaller if you want, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what you're going to be doing. Um, so here's the two thousand milliliter round bottom flask with two necks in it, which is good to have. Good thing. Um, this is just a little cork stand. I guess it's good if you want it. You really don't need it, though. Uh, it's for putting the round bottom flask on, like that, so it stands upright. Not very fancy. You can probably make one yourself rather than paying too much money for that one, like I did. This was like $12. It's a piece of cork, whatever. Anyway, um, get some tubing if you're dealing with gases or anything like that. It's good to have. This is silicon tubing. You can also use rubber tubing, like that stuff over there or Teflon tubing is super good because it doesn't react with hardly anything. But unfortunately, I don't have any of that. Okay, get some normal flasks like this just for storing stuff. This is 500 milliliter. I ordered a 1,000 milliliter one that's coming. 1,000 is pretty good because I find this is a little bit too small. Uh, here's also a 100 milliliter one, which is nice, kind of convenient just for storing little bits of stuff if you need it. Get some volumetric flasks for measuring stuff out really accurately. As it says, this is a thousand milliliters plus or minus, um, actually it doesn't say it on this, I thought it did. Well, it's a thousand milliliters. You fill it up to that little line right there, and it gives you a really accurate way of measuring how much liquid is in something. It's got a little top too. How fancy. That over there. Also have a hundred milliliter one. Right here, and there it is, 100 milliliters plus or minus 0 0.1 milliliters. Sorry, my camera's a little blurry, I'm using my phone. Uh, yeah, get a couple of those, good to have. Um, another round bottom flask, two neck, 1000 milliliter. There you go, already know what those things are. Okay, um, this is an, a separatory funnel. What you do is you put liquid in this and you shake it up and it will, uh, will separate, which is pretty good. Um, so you get one of these, this is a thousand milliliter, you can get bigger, smaller, whatever you want. Uh, this is probably my favorite item, not this guy, but this guy. It is a reflux condenser, and it's so nice. What it does is you have two, uh, uh tubes right here. The water goes in one of them, and then goes down the thing, and then, whoop, starts going, whoa, 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 in a spiral. And what happens is steam comes in this end and travels down the thing and condenses on the coils, and then liquid comes out of this guy. Um, you can get a lot of different kinds of condensers. 
some are air cooled, some are water cooled, but they're different because the liquid goes through the tube in the middle rather than cool the coolant going through that tube in the middle. I prefer this guy though. I got a huge one, just went all out on this. I find it's perfect for pretty much all of my needs. You can set it up for reflux when it's set up like that if you want to to keep uh, vapor from boiling away or for condensation when you set it up like that. I will get to that in later videos. Okay, I'm gonna set this up here for the moment. Uh, this guy is similar to the reflux con uh, condenser over here, but how it's set up is you boil liquid in through this thing and the air cools some of the liquid and has it condensed back down. And it's used for uh, what's called fractional distillation and it helps get a little bit of a purer sample when you are distilling things with fairly close boiling points. The vapor goes up, it goes through this condenser once it gets up to the top, and then it drops down into a flask. Do that stuff, like I said, in other videos. Now for connectors. These connectors are pretty cheap, good to have, well, very good to have because you need them. Um, let me go through them. Uh, these things, I have five of them, they're just little stoppers. They just go in, block stuff off. There you go, pretty simple. I have five of them. These things are little uh, things for thermometers. What you do is you put the thermometer in the hole at the top and it's got a little rubber seal on it. The thermometer goes through the thing into the round bottom flask or into whatever you know piece of glassware you want. But um, it's sealed though, so you can get a temperature reading and none of the gases or anything like that will come out. It's also good for electrolysis. You can put the wires through here and the uh, outside will be sealed away from the inside but you can still get electricity in. So I've got two of those, you know, electrolysis, plus and minus. Um, this guy is broken because I stepped on it. That's why there's tape on it. Oh, electrical tape also. You should get some of that in case you step on something like I did. Um, you can hook a tube up to that guy and it'll bubble gas. Uh, it'll Gas just goes down the tube and bubbles into a flask or something like that. It's also really good. You can use it as sort of a turkey baster type thing. You just put this into liquid and you close the top and then you can pull the liquid out and just dump a little bit into something. So it's good for that as well. But its primary purpose is uh, for gases. Okay, this thing is for uh, doing distillation. This side right here goes into your round bottom flask. Liquid boils up and then it comes down this thing into the big fancy condenser here where it condenses and then goes into a round bottom flask. You can either stop the top here or put one of the thermometer things so you can stick a thermometer in there and figure out what temperature the vapor is. Also, you know, these will be used in other videos, so you know, worry about that later. Uh, this is good if you just want to get gas out or in or something like that. Um, what I use this for primarily is put a thermometer adapter on the top, put a wire down it into the uh, flask when I'm doing electrolysis, and then the gas can come back up and out. This piece, what it does, is it hooks on to the end of the condensing column, like so. And the once the stuff is condensed, it just goes into this thing down and out of this tube. Something nice, though, is it's got this guy. So it, the liquid comes out of the tube, but then any gases that are created can come back along the sides of the tube, back up the thing, and out this. It's kind of hard to see, but the liquid comes in through this guy right here, and it goes down through this tube down the center, and then once it comes into the round bottom flask, any gases go up the side here, like that. They go up the sides, and then out of this tube here. It's kind of nice if your experiment is making any kind of gases or any kind of nastiness like that. This guy is simply something to take two kind of liquids and, you know, put them together and put them into something. I honestly have not used this. You should probably have it. It's good to have, but I haven't used it yet, so... I will leave uh, the decision up to you. Also, this guy, probably should have done this before, but whatever. Um, it's just a little pump that I bought at like a, uh, what do you call it, an aquarium store. Um, little tiny pump, I think it's something like, like 50, no, like 90 liters per minute or something. No, per hour, sorry, uh, or something like that. And it's just used for putting water through these tubes through the condensing column. It does not need to go fast. This was like 15 bucks. Um, it's pretty good. I'll open up the sides so you can see. It's just a uh, 
little impeller like that. And these are really good in case you get any kind of um, hair or you know gunk inside your uh, reservoir for water. Um, you'll be able to clean it out pretty easily. It's nice, actually. I, I like it. Um, and it's a submersible thing, so you can plug it into the wall, completely submerge this in water, and you're set. Show demonstrations of that later. Also, as far as water goes, you can use a... Let's see, this is for winemaking. Um, it's 23 liters right here. This is the reservoir that I use just for um, having water that the condenser uses. It can actually heat up pretty well. Um, you'd be surprised if you're condensing something for a long time. So you should use a lot of water. Um, don't just use like a three gallon bucket or anything like that. Um, it's blue because I put some bleach in it uh, to keep stuff from uh, growing. Don't use too much bleach uh, so that it doesn't start corroding the pump or anything like that. I don't even know if that can happen, but you never know. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's pretty much everything. I cannot think of anything else. Uh, this, that's all the stuff I have. That's all the stuff I have needed so far. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. As far as price goes, I ordered all this stuff online. Um, you can, let me see, I probably paid about, uh, six, seven hundred dollars, something like that. The heating mantle was one of the big guys. It was a little over two hundred. The stirring plate was something like a hundred dollars, hundred and fifty, something like that. Uh, the other pricey item, surprisingly, the stand was seventy bucks. Uh, round bottom flasks are, are like thirty, something like that. I ordered the stuff from China, but um, as far as quality goes, it still pretty worked pretty well. So I'm not too worried about where it came from. But yeah, so if you're setting up your lab, this is sort of the basics that you need to have. And yeah, we'll get to other. We'll start using it in other videos. Hope you enjoyed.